This is hunting and fishing in God's country, and I'm down here in Covington, Georgia, fishing for late summer bass, and I'm going to try to teach you how to catch some good largemouth. Got a good one here on the jig. Yankum Gorilla jig. That's a big large mouth. That's a really nice one. Working that jig real slow across the bottom. That's a good one. Pretty good large mouth. He just swallowed that Yankum Gorilla jig. Look where that jig is. He absolutely just swallowed it. I had one of those uh, yum, I think it's a woolly tail or something, some kind of a yum creature bait. There's a trailer. It's a really good jig. But it's a, it's a really good largemouth. Just throwing around these trees, overhanging the water, and uh, just dragging it really slowly. Just trying different ways of working it, like dragging it slow and sometimes hopping a little bit. It's a pretty good largemouth. I'm going to go ahead and get him unhooked and get him back to going. Got a pretty good one here on a bait. It's called MS Slammer. It's a big swim bait. Looks kind of like a rat. Pretty nice one. Barely hooked. It's a pretty good one. On an MS Slammer though, and what I'm doing with this bait, not a lot of people throw it. It's a really big bait. Um, just kind of reeling it slow, letting it wake across the top of the water. It's a big bait for big bass. It's a pretty good large mouth though. Like I said, um, early summer mornings like this, late summer mornings, I like to throw stuff like this. It ain't, it's mid-morning probably. Just kind of slowly reeling that on top. We're throwing stuff like that in buzz baits and uh, bubblegum trick worms, stuff like that. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy back. I got a decent one on a jig. Yankin' Gorilla jig. A little bit smaller one. He ain't too bad though. Like I said, just flipping it around these trees. I love fishing like this. Just flipping it around these trees and uh, just working it real slow and you'll feel them hit it. Uh, it just don't take much. You gotta just drag it through some of that heavy cover. I've got one on a crankbait, went out just a little bit deeper throwing crankbaits and uh, soft plastic. Caught this one on a DT-10. The water's a little dirty so I decided to throw like a fire tiger color and uh, you hit that good. Decent large mouth. They're starting to move out a little bit deeper off the deeper parts on ledges and stuff like that. And I'm just kind of throwing like crankbaits and a Texas rig creature baits and big worms, stuff like that. Just dragging it real slow in the bottom, the creature baits. And I've been catching some and uh, then the crankbaits, just kind of reeling it slow. Go ahead and get this by the guy back in. Not too bad. Yeah, And a lot of these fish are kind of up shallow today. Not too bad. A lot of them's up kind of shallow. Um, what's going on is uh, when it gets hot, about 11:30, around 11:30 in the day, these fish start moving out to the deeper water when that sun gets high, and uh, it gets too hot, they move off the bank out in the deeper water. Uh, right now they're still kind of up on the banks because we got cloud cover. Whenever you have cloud cover, usually they'll stay on the banks a little longer because it's cooler. But um, go ahead and get this guy back. Pretty nice. One. Those two days we was fishing on Spillers Lake. It was really hot. It was in around probably around 98 to 100 degrees. Some days in the middle of the day that was probably the high. Um, it got really hot, but the fish were biting, of course, in the early of the morning and late of the evening, right before dark. But in the middle of the day, we caught some bass as well, and even some very big ones. In the middle of the day, I was fishing slow, but in the morning, I was fishing kind of fast. I would throw 
a topwater frog, like a spro frog or a strike king KVD frog. My cameraman was throwing a strike king KVD frog and hers caught a 10 pounder. And uh, it was a shame we didn't get it on film the time I got the camera. It, it just, he already had it in the boat. But it was a huge bass. God, we got some pictures of it. But um, he, he caught a big one on that. I think he caught two big ones on it. And uh, that worked and also a Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper worked. And uh, we was using that on a um, Gamakatsu 5 volt hook, wide gap hook. And um, I was also using trick worms, zoom, zoom trick worms on that um, red Gamakatsu 5 volt hook. Um, I usually have a lot more luck on red for some reason. I mean, it probably don't matter the color, but for some reason I usually catch more when I use red. But um, with the Zoom Trick Worm, I was using bubble gum, the bubble gum color, but methylate, like the methylate color works really well, and also white, and uh, some other colors. Um, that was working really well early in the morning. And uh, when it got later in the day, about the middle of the day, I would try crankbait, like a, um, Rapala DT-10 and I was trying it in a fire tiger color because the water was stained um, When the water isn't stained I, I usually use more clear colors like a shad color or a bluegill color and a couple other things we was doing we was also throwing like Texas rigs and um, Even weightless worms and what I was doing with my weightless worms I was getting a zoom trick worm and like a watermelon seed or green pumpkin and I was just dragging it really slowly and then letting it sink to the bottom, just doing that really slowly with those trick worms and catching a lot of bass doing that as well. And with the Texas rig, just the same thing, Texas rig, just dragging it really slow and then hopping it. And also I was throwing a Yankum Gorilla Jig. I was doing really well with that. I was catching them on that from morning, middle day, and late evening. And I had a um, young... Uh, woolly bug as a trailer on there. I had the young woolly bug and uh, they usually work really well as a trailer on those Yankum Gorilla Jigs. And um, I also used a Mike Shaw rad. It's called an MS Slammer and I used that and I caught some, that's what I caught a lot of kicker fish with. That's a really good bait if you're going for big bass but you got to remember to be patient. It might take all day to throw it but you will eventually usually catch a big bass on it and usually you have to slow roll it, just kind of wake it across the top of the water. And usually that's the way you'll catch the, the big bass with it. And I caught several good ones with that. And I usually use 25 to 30 pound test line on it. And I was using Trilene Big Game. That's a pretty cheap, very good monofilament line I was using. And I've had a lot of success off that line. But um, like I said, a lot of these baits, we was working pretty slow, like the crankbait was slow rolling it. And I was fishing it on ledges in the same way with the weightless worms and jigs. And also with the jigs, I was flipping it in bushes and blowdowns and working it really slow and kind of yo-yoing it off the branches. But uh, that was some of the things we used on Spiller's Lake. I had a great time fishing here at Spiller's Lake. Um, I want to give a special thanks to my girlfriend and her brother Hurst for filming me. And uh, they caught some nice largemouth as well. Um, it's a great lake, it's got some really big bass in it, and it uh, just goes to show how much fun it can be when you figure out how to catch late summer largemouth. Thanks for watching, and God bless.